Hello and welcome to the My eBook Maker tutorial. By now you should have read through some of the materials on eBooks, ePublications. If you haven't done that, make sure you go back to the schedule page in the online section and read those so you have a background on what we're doing here. The purpose of this video is going to show you how to use the tools in My eBook Maker. Uh, the wonderful thing about it is it's a cloud-based program. It's totally online, meaning you don't have to download anything, don't have to install anything. So let's get to it. The first thing you're going to do going to do is go to myebookmaker.com. When you get there, you notice it's uh it seems pretty cluttered, ads all over the place and that's what we get for free, right? So, you're going to have to create a, create an account if you don't have one yet. Uh, if you have one, go ahead and sign in. Otherwise, create one and then sign in. So, I'll just sign in here. Uh, once you sign in, you're going to get a list of the books you've created. For many of you, that's going to be totally empty. You can see I already created one on birds, um, but for this, what I'm going to do is uh, create a brand new book on shape. So this is going to be like for kindergarten, first grade level, and I want a, a um, EPUB, an electronic, electronic publication that I can share with my first grade class who has some iPads that they can use. Um, now, there's these links here which look useful, but understand that those are all ads. Pretty much the only ones you use are once you've created a book, you click on those book specific things, or these two links that are not very well um, shown, but you got new book and my book. So I'm going to go to new book. Once I go there, I'm going to call this new book shapes. So I do that. I'm going to leave myself as the author. Um, I can put some notes if I want. This is a this is a book for first graders. You know, it doesn't really matter. And then I can put a cover image now if I want. I can do that later. So I'm actually going to do that later. So I click continue and it begins creating my book. Now you can see it brings up a what's called a WYSIWYG editor. What you see is what you get. And a lot of these tools are going to look familiar to you from using Microsoft Word or any kind of online editor that you've been uh, using. So on this page I'm going to put this is a cube because I'm going to be doing a book on shapes. So any I can write some text certainly um, more maybe more powerfully especially for first grade I'm going to be able to add an image. Now for my ebook maker, you can't add an image like we normally do. You can't um, download it to your computer, attach you know attach it like you would to an email or anything like that. Since this is totally cloud based, so what you have to do is you're going to insert an image. So I, I click on the little image there, but now what you see is there's no option to upload or insert or attach. What I have to do is I have to put the URL of a picture in there. Okay, so I'm going to cancel this for now, uh, and now I'm going to go find a picture online. A really great website for public domain pictures. If you need pictures, um, not worrying about copyright and things like that, go to Pixabay. It's great. So you can see here, I clicked there. I typed in Sphere, but why don't we find a good cube to use? So I type cube. Go ahead and use the block, since hopefully many first graders have seen this one. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on this picture, and depending on the browser you're using there's basically one of these that we want. It's going to look different for Chrome and Internet Explorer Safari, but I'm in Firefox right now. And the one I want is copy image location. For other browsers that might say copy image URL or copy image address, something like that. But I'll click that. And now I head back to my ebook maker, that tab. And now if I insert an image, I can put the URL here. So I'm just going to, uh, you can either right click paste or control V there. And now what you see is when I click out of that, it's going to drop it in this preview um, window, and you can ignore all this text down here. But what I can also do right away, and I would probably do this on the front end if I were you, is uh, pick a different size. This is a pretty large size, but maybe you want it that big, and maybe as you begin looking at ebooks and um, testing yours out, you're going to find you want it smaller or bigger. So I'm going to make this smaller. I'm going to make it um, 400 for the width, and you can see it auto adjusts the height to keep the aspect ratio of the picture, which is nice. So I click OK. You can see it drops it right into my ebook, and that's that can be my first page. And now what they're going to do is they're going to call each of these pages chapters. So instead of calling them chapters, I'm and what that's going to do is auto create a table of contents to use. Um, but it, you have to do it for each page, and you can't necessarily put multiple pages into one chapter, which would be nice. Um, so for this, I'm just going to name it the pages by what's on the page. So I'm going to name this page cube. I'm going to click save. And now I'm going to add a new page. So new page. See, I clicked right there. And now I'm going to say this is a sphere. 
So now, I'm just going to go back to Pixabay, look up Sphere here, and that looks like a good one. So when I had before, I right click on that, copy image location, head back to my ebook maker, and again, I'm just going to insert it through that process. So I click on image here, I paste the URL in there, and I'm going to take this down to, let's go 360. Again, as you test this out, you're going to find a size that's good for you. Click OK, it's in there. Now, another really powerful thing about ebooks is since they're usually on electronic devices, which have access to the internet, I can also add links in an ebook to outside sources. So maybe I want them to be able to find out more about spheres. Um, so I can say, you know, tap here to find out more about spheres. And so what I'm going to do now is I've highlighted this text, and um, just so you can see how it works, obviously you probably wouldn't do this with first graders, but I'm going to go ahead and just type sphere wiki, and maybe you'd, you'd certainly find a better page than Wikipedia for first graders, just more pictures or something. But you can see what I'm going to do is grab this URL, so I, I click up here, I highlight that whole thing, I copy it, and then what I can do is back in my ebook maker, I've highlighted this text, and you can see the little chain link somewhere. There it is on the globe. So I click that, and now what I'm going to do is paste the URL into there. And what I can do is I can say, well, if someone clicks it, I want them to open it in a new window, and you can check some of the other things. But I click OK, and now you can see it's hyperlinked. So if someone's reading this book, once I've downloaded it, put it on their iPad, they can click on that and it'll actually shoot them out to the Sphere uh, Wikipedia site. Why don't we add one more, and I'll rename the page again, even though it's called a chapter name, call this Sphere, and then why don't we add one more page, and this time why don't we add a cylinder. So this is a cylinder, once again I'll change the name right away so don't forget. I gotta go find that URL, that's always the important part. So cylinder, should find one good enough. And let's use this. I'll right click, copy image location, head back to my ebook maker, and insert the image, paste the URL, and take this down. Maybe do a 200. Maybe what I'll do is try different sizes, and then once I actually view my ebook, my EPUB, then I can decide what to change these back to. So this is a cylinder. Let's go ahead and save this. So we can say my ebook is done. Obviously, you'll add more or less pages. Well, more pages. And then um, what we need to do is now get this into a form where our iPad or other e-readers or programs we have on computers can read it. To do that, I click down here, download EPUB file. Uh, I want to save it, obviously, so I save it, and Mozilla will likely just dump it into a downloads folder that I have. Um, you'll have to see whatever browser you're using is going to save it a different place, likely. So, once I download that, that's the EPUB that you're going to attach to an assignments page or send to friends, since you're proud of your shapes EPUB that you made. But now, if I go back to my book, since I've saved everything, I have my birds one, I have my shapes one, and you can see you can edit contents, change the pages around. Um, you can download it straight from here, or you can edit um, the cover and title. So here's where I'd go back, and maybe I really want the um, a, a different image on there. And it looks like for the cover image, you are going to attach it like you would an email, so um, you'll have to download that picture to your desktop or something and then upload it from here. Click Save Changes and that will uh, take care of that. So that's a quick overview of how to create an e-publication. Um, hopefully you're already beginning to brainstorm ideas of ways this can be used in your classroom.